Hey there, and welcome to our second episode of GitLab Design Talks uh, on collaboration. I'm here with Ian, and I'm Nick. And Ian, can you uh, introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ian Camacho. I'm a product designer for the package stage here at GitLab. Um, I've been here for about a year and a half, which is pretty cool, bringing a product um, in the package side from pretty minimal up to some more lovable categories, which is cool, um, and have about a decade of experience in creative and design before that. Wonderful, wonderful one. And I'd love to know a little bit more about how your decade of experience compares to the year and a half of experience that, uh, of, of, that you've had at GitLab and specifically how uh, collaboration has changed between then and now. That's a really great question. I think in all of my experiences beforehand, um, between agency work and in-house product design, the product design team tended to be junior. And so the collaboration effort from the design side is twofold. Half of it is just delivering designs and getting everyone on board with doing something. The other half of what I used to have to do is just prove that the design process was worthwhile. Um, it is valuable to do problem validation. It is good to test with users before we build it. A lot of conversations around getting everyone on board with that and instead of feeling like it just slows the process down. In contrast, when I joined GitLab, everyone was on board with that already. I just walked in and they were like, you need to do this because you're a designer. And I was just like, wow, okay, yes, we definitely need to do that, let's go. Um, so it actually has been a lot easier to have that robust design conversation and then encouraged empathy-driven development and a design-oriented strategy and stuff like that. Um, that's been the big difference. Yeah, it's it, it's so much more efficient when uh, the legitimacy of design has been already agreed upon and you can just sort of go ahead and start exploring and, and having a good time with your team. And I think you bring up a, a really good point. I mean, I, I came from a agency and, and consulting background as well. And uh, one of the big differences I found is is the, the role of design within like project oriented work versus product oriented work. So project where there's a, a finite time span and you have to sort of plan a set of activities in order to get to a particular point and then you've agreed upon a point with a, with a customer. Whereas product oriented collaboration is sort of this continuous infinite sort of thing where you're going from, uh, where you're just going for however long because it's, it's a product and you're just continuously updating it. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about um, if you've noticed this difference at all, and if so, what sort of things come about with that? I 100% agree. Um, when I worked at consultancies, it was about proving the value before the contract started and then delivering on the contract at the end. And that was the whole conversation. Since moving to GitLab, after you're done with your first design project, as it were, that goes through the whole process, the problem validation, design, solution validation, over to engineering, I had a feeling that I just wanted to like, okay, we're done. You know, this is the end of the engagement. And at one point, the product manager was just like, okay, cool. Now we have to do the next thing. What do you think that is? And I realized when that happened, I had answers and I had data to help provide that kind of strategy. But I had never really been asked that question before. What does design think we should work on next? As opposed to, I guess, in the consulting background is what does the next contract engagement say we should work on? Or what has mm -hmm. leadership or stakeholders said is the next thing? I have a lot more voice and what we should be talking about because I've talked to users, I know what they need and uh, product management and I partner between what the business needs and what users need to figure out what to do next. That conversation allows for so much more strategic thinking and a lot more robust conversations, not just between PM and design, but with the whole team. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like the, the idea that in, in the, uh, in the project based world, in the consulting world, there's a, a brief and that brief is often often written and and determined before the designer actually comes on board and executes on the work. So there is a a bit of a challenge that I had when first adapting to that. In that, as a designer, I'd never been used to writing my own briefs, which is effectively what you're doing when you're when you're doing like the strategy and thinking about what we should be doing next. And I think that's a bit of a gap that I see in a, in a lot of junior designers as well. I wonder, do you have any? tips on how how you could potentially or how you found you um, adapted to that transition of effectively writing your own brief? Yes, I found and the advice that I would give to someone in a similar situation 
is when that question comes up and if you don't have a solid like, oh, everything says we should do this, ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, product management tends to walk in with what the market is doing and what the business says they should be doing. And you may have heard a couple of things from users about what, they, what else they'd like. Walk in with questions with your product manager about what's the next most impactful thing? What can we bring value to our customers as quickly as possible? This is what I've heard. Have you heard the same? Is there a market for this? Is it a good business decision? Once you start asking those questions, A, it ensures that your product manager is thinking about these things, which they should be doing anything anyway, and they're great and lovely, but it helps you also get into the mindset of, as a designer, really deeply in touch with the users, I have a perspective that can lean into that strategy. And you start thinking a little bit longer term. And that, especially at GitLab, helps you move into the iteration idea of, this is what will deliver value quickest for GitLab as a business for our customers. And then if you pair this with this other design feature that delivers value, that's a new iteration. And then we can bring it together. And that creates this really robust experience that will help the business stand out. You start having a much more, I don't want to say business oriented, but the value you can bring to your team is a lot more than this is good UX. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sort of speaks to the fact that, uh, when you're working on these these sort of product oriented teams, um, as a as a designer, you become a little bit more T shaped, become quite quite of a generalist as well, and you need that generalist approach and understanding at a at a you know relatively um, uh, shallow level compared to your understanding of the user or something. You need an understanding of uh, some business concepts. You need some technical concepts in order to communicate and collaborate more effectively with, with the other people on your team. Uh, so uh, I forgot what direction I was going with there, but yeah, I, I think what, I, what I'm trying to say is that generalism also means that it, it stops you from having this chuck it over the fence attitude where uh, someone writes the brief, the designer does the designs and then they chuck the designs over to to the, the development team and they, they implement it. Instead, it's, it's much more of a, a, blended, a blended approach at the different stages of the, of the process where, from taking the idea to, uh, to implementation. And I think this sort of brings up um, the concept that you talked you talk to me about that you wanted to sort of um, focus this conversation around, which is uh, leader to leader um, collaboration. So maybe you can sort of introduce what this means and we can, we can dive into that. For sure. I think you did an excellent job teeing that up. So thank you. One of the things that I notice is that when you're a designer and you're used to getting a brief and then tossing it over the fence to engineering, you're following kind of a leader follower mentality. So in this instance, the product manager who really does have the agency and is responsible for the whole product, telling you what to, what to do next. And then you put it together, which is basically putting the description together of what engineering needs to build. And what we discovered is as a designer, I'm trying to fulfill that need for eight, 10 different engineers. And I'm only one person and delivering designs that exactly tell you what each piece needs to be wasn't really an effective circle for us. What we did on package is after a couple of milestones of realizing that I was never going to get ahead of the front end team, I was always going to be they were gonna need more work. I was gonna to need to put more comps together, more designs together. We realized that I was answering kind of the same questions in different ways. Mm -hmm. What we did is took a step back, take, bleh, take a step back and realize that we were doing the leader follower mentality where nobody really knew what the higher vision was. They were trying to just check off boxes. What we did early on and it's proven to be pretty successful for us is move to a leader leader mentality which is that everyone that is on the team is an expert in what they do. I'm an expert when it comes to UX in terms of design. Tim, who is our product manager, is an expert in product management. He knows about business strategy and marketing and, and when to integrate with different party members of the company. Engineers, obviously experts in the technical side of things, and they have the capacity to actually build things, and they're experts in it. And they have a lot of opinions and values. When you're doing the leader follower mentality, those values tend to get lost because you're just prescriptively putting out work. By moving to leader leader and everyone walking in with expertise, we discovered that product management could say, here's our large scale vision and here's all the reasons why. I talked to customers, they said this was important. 
if we build these five things, this is what our users start to think. This is what our customers will, val will value. This will move us from being under our competition to being next to them with the least amount of work, those kinds of conversations. And when you start sharing the vision in terms of that standpoint, and everyone can walk to the table saying, I'm an expert in this area. I understand the vision. Now I have the authority to say, this is how we should do it. This mm -hmm. has helped tremendously. Um, Tim is, as the product manager, is not responsible for writing every single issue that could possibly be built with perfectly detailed instructions on how everything needs to be articulated. Moving down the chain, I don't have to create a comp for every single state of every single issue that I need to create for each of the engineers that I'm working with that doesn't work very effectively. I end up falling behind really quickly. And from an engineering standpoint, they're less stifled. If they understand the vision and they have all of the technical competencies, they have the authority and agency in our group to say, you said last week that this was a major priority to get this done. From a technical side, we could do it by building these three steps instead. What do you think? Having everyone collaborate and work together on a unified and shared vision means that everyone is working together. And the advantage is from the design side, and I'm totally fine being selfish about this, is I have to produce less comps. I can create one big vision that just says, um, this is where we want the dependency proxy to be in six months. Here's the features our users have tested. They said they want it. Engineering, how do we get there? And then from there, instead of reacting to product management and trying to feed engineering, Engineering now has a large vision and can build towards it. And my job then becomes the smaller scale where front end engineers feel like they could build something and then they check with me. Is this good UX? Does this work? How does this feel as an iteration? Does it deliver value on what we said? This creates a group conversation that everyone's working towards the same thing. So as part of the strategy side, I have to produce less detailed instructions. Everyone feels better. They have agency and able to discuss things at a broader level. And that helps tremendously because we as the team of 10 people are putting it all together instead of Tim is telling the designer to make comps, to tell engineering, to build this and hope we get there eventually. Yeah, that's that's a really beautifully illustrated um, concept on, on how teams work here. You know, there's there's uh, a lot of uh, people within a team who have uh, agency to do work and bring their area of expertise, um, but they rely on other team members um, to sort of fill in the gaps of the things that they don't necessarily know. But the, the way that it comes together is very pragmatic uh, so that we are prioritizing throughput of, uh, of the features and things that we're continuously shipping, but at the same time, we are relying on the expertise of the, of the individual team members in such a way that the quality of the stuff coming in with the throughput is also super, super good. Um, that's something I actually struggled with quite a bit is um, being the single designer within a team and managing the workload compared to the eight other engineers in, in my team. So I was wondering, do you have any advice for me and other people in the team for how we designers can be a little bit more efficient with the way that we collaborate so that we're not constantly doing a comp uh, or a design for every single request that comes from, a, from an engineer. How do you actually go about doing that? Yeah, that is a really great question. The first thing I would say is if you think of product strategy as being the left side of the process mm -hmm. and delivery on the right, I would say that design needs to move left. Be more strategic. The greatest thing that we did on package is we took a quarter to go through the whole design process of something. So that was three milestones to do research, to figure out the problem, design in order to put comps together, solution validation, and move forward. We did a higher level design. So we put designs out there that was the six month strategy for the dependency proxy. For example, I've kind of talked about that at different showcases. And we have already seen that there are many different states and iterations that I didn't have to be involved in directly or put comps together where engineers knew what we were trying to build. They knew where we were trying to go. And so they were able to just check in with me and say, I want to build this first. And then this next step, does that deliver value to users in the media in the interim? Is it a good UX? And then I'm able to answer them as the expert of UX saying, the idea is really good. If you tweak these two details, I think it creates a really powerful experience now and in the next stage. 
and it lightens my workload. I don't have to create those comps for every iteration between now and the next six months. I needed to create a big one. And then from there, I can help engineers whenever there's an in-between step that might need some design effort. They work with me in a way that they understand that that is my area of expertise, just like theirs is the technical side of things. And when they have questions or they're unsure of things, they know that I am here as a resource for them to understand better and build better solutions instead of the opposite, which is that I have to prescribe every step along the way. Mm, interesting. So not only participating as a designer further left of, uh, of, the, uh, of the process, also getting buy-in and alignment with the engineers further left as well is what helps to um, direct them in, in the solutions that they take. So your role in some of the smaller, more tactical decisions is more of a reviewer as opposed to a, a designer. Exactly. And I think one of the benefits that if I were to give someone advice on how to start doing this is bring engineers and have them shadow research sessions, mm. especially um, when you are doing moderated testing. And so you get a lot of contextual data. If you bring in an engineer to sit on one or two of those, suddenly they move from a reactive building style, which is I need to check the boxes in the issue, to empathy-driven engineering. They understand what they're trying to accomplish for the user. And at GitLab, we have a unique opportunity because in most cases, our engineers are also our users. So they have a direct path to that empathy. And that's what we do a lot in package is, I'm not an expert in packages. I've used a couple every now and then, but I'm not a technical expert. I instead gave them the background and context of what our customers are saying and what our users are saying. And as experts, they were able to build towards that. I see, I see. So you mentioned that uh, you, you as a team, you, you invested three months in going through the entirety of the design process from research all the way to um, implementation. And I, I wonder, uh, that, that's, a, that's a lot of investment. That's a lot of, a lot of time to invest, regardless of whether it's just you or the engineers in your team, that, that equates to quite a bit of money. So I, I wonder, how did you go about um, proposing um, this way of working with the rest of your team? And how did you get buy-in around, around actually working this way? And then what was the general reaction of the team once you did it? That's a really good question. We did have a little bit of hesitation. This is when problem validation design and solution validation were formalized in the handbook and everyone on the team was just getting used to the idea of how that worked. Mm. It was a very large investment, but from our engineering, actually, I discussed this is, they asked the question during one of our sinks, I don't quite remember which one, um, what's the value of doing all these steps? And so I kind of walked through, problem validation means that we actually understand the full problem, the complexities of it, what our users are expecting. Design is the chance for us to put together a solution and then solution validation means that we're able to ask users, does this actually solve your problem before you go off and build it? And the reason we do all of these steps is because it gives you all of this data and it's really valuable and to make sure that you are building the right things. So instead of investing in a solution that you may have to change later, you have a much greater confidence that you're building what needs to be built. They really like the facts. Um, and I'm quoting one of our front end engineers. I don't have to worry about doing something twice because I know I got it right the first time mm. because you tested it, you checked it and I saw you do it. Um, and I saw the areas where users got stuck. And I'm now as the leader leader model, I'm able to come in and say, I think we should fix it this way. Cause as an engineer, this makes more sense to me. That's how we kind of got that initial buy-in is instead of engineers, your job is to build the thing we tell you to build. It turned into all of us need to come together to build a thing for our users. And investing in this process seems like a lot at first, but when you take three months to build the dependency proxy strategy, which is what we did, there's six months of work that the engineers need to put together to do it that doesn't require my full attention anymore. So I can take the next quarter to work on the next thing. And it actually allows strategy to get farther ahead so that it's not a game of cat and mouse between being able to stay ahead of engineering while satisfying our users. What I love about the way that you just described it there is you used language and terminology which wasn't isolated to the, to the domain of design. You used it and you pitched the value of, of um, problem validation in a way that anyone could understand it. And specifically, you pitched the value of it 
to engineers in ways that would, would benefit them rather than saying problem validation helps you understand the problem space and build empathy and understand and, and using uh, design language, which can sometimes be quite off-putting. You actually phrased it in a very simple and easy to understand way in value, which is meaningful for the, the person that you're communicating with, which I think is like a, like a very, um, very deep concept and very wise way of, uh, of interacting and collaborating with other people in the team. Uh, so we, uh, we have uh, two minutes left. So I, I just want to sort of just uh, press a pause there. I've had, I've had a really, really interesting conversation here. So I really appreciate it. Uh, is there one thing that you want to leave anyone with in the, the last two minutes that we're here? Yes. When you're thinking of collaboration as a designer, Bring everyone together will yield better results for your team, but will also make your life easier. So inclusion, include people in research, make sure every iteration of the design, engineers have a chance to look at it. Even if they don't leave feedback, including everyone makes it a much smoother process. People buy in more when they're included in the beginning. That would be mm -hmm. my sagely advice. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is sort of a theme that I keep on coming across when discussing collaboration is the way that we collaborate at GitLab is very dependent on the other values that we have at GitLab as well. So diversity, uh, inclusion and belonging sort of is exactly what you talked about there. So it's the way that we uniquely blend these values that we have at GitLab with collaboration that makes it so special. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much and, and have a have a good day and see you later. Bye bye.